I am so excited. I have not uh, gone live in a long time. And so I am excited to have a guest today and I am going to be sharing a Pinterest manager success story. So uh, through this, I want to share with people what that path looks like for somebody just getting started as a Pinterest manager and what some of my students are experiencing once they enroll in the Pinterest Manager Academy. So today I have a very special guest, um, Robin Noriega, and she's going to share her journey to becoming a Pinterest manager. So in case you um, are not familiar with me, I'm Emily Vales. I'm a Pinterest marketing and ad strategist. And really what I focus on now is serving my students and helping them start a successful Pinterest management business so that they have freedom and flexibility and can work from home. So some of my students are still working their nine to five. Some are stay at home moms looking to take some of the pressure off of their spouse. Um, everybody's story is a little bit different and it's also interesting because what that looks like for people in when they are finding time to work on this new business you know it's gonna look different depending on their unique situation so what I'm gonna do is I am going to bring on Miss Robin so that we can chat about what her success looks like because I think that it really helps people visualize what this could look like for them when they hear other people's stories. So like I said, I'm excited to bring her on and let's see here. She requested to join, so make sure I accepted that. So she should be joining here in just a minute. Let's see if, okay. yay! Yes. Yes. Oh, we got it. <laughs> and I wanted to say, of course, welcome. And I know that your day, and this is the beauty of <laughs> working from home, yeah. that you your day did not, has not gone as planned. I know that your mom is going to help with some childcare, so I just wanted to say this is what the Academy is all about. Yes. Kids are welcome, and if you have to jump off because you have a child that needs you, hey, that is, <laughs> that's the beauty of this. So this is obviously, like, I'm just excited to chat with you, super laid back. So no worries if your kids are there, they are welcome, or if you need to jump off. So I'm just excited to chat with you. No, that no, sounds good. Not... Thank you. Yes, definitely. I mean, it's like best laid plans all the time, but that's why we do what we do. So I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. Okay, so Robin, I would love for you to introduce yourself and share a little bit about what this looked like leading up to becoming a Pinterest manager. So what you did in the past and what steps you took that kind of led you to decide on Pinterest management and how that was really like the niche that you wanted to focus on. Sure, no, I, um, let's see. So I started out, gosh, I got my degree in like elementary education and then specialized in reading. And I taught for 15 years before I, um, before we had kids. So we're later in life parents, but, um, and I loved it. I was a special ed teacher. I was a first grade teacher. I was a reading specialist. And then last, before I had my children, I was a literacy coach. So I was working with adults or like teachers <laughs> and, um, working on them, with, you know, uh, developing literacy strategies and things like that for their classroom. And then when we had our first child, I knew I wanted to stay home. That was something that was important to us from there. So that was about 2018 when, um, our first one was born. And then, um, we have three now, so we're busy, but, um, <laughs> so, I knew, so I wanted to, you know, after that, after my third one, who's almost a year, she's almost a year now, was born, uh, we knew we wanted to do something, you know, like you said, kind of add a, um, add an income in. I knew I didn't want to go back to teaching. It just wasn't feasible for our plan. Um, clearly I couldn't stay at home and you know, all those sorts of things. And that was important. And I, I don't have childcare. Like I said, my mom helps out, but yeah. um, you know, that's few and far between not because she, you know, because she has her own life, not because you know, of any other <laughs> yeah. and, um, so I needed something that I could do during nap after at bedtime, early in the morning, those sorts of things. So I started to kind of explore the virtual world and what that, you know, what, what possibilities were out there. So I started out training as a virtual assistant and then um, kind of hooked into the teachers be teachers realm. So those who are teachers kind of know yeah. um, there's a whole there's a whole like virtual world <laughs> to yeah. teachers be teachers that I never knew um, yeah. about and started doing that. But I knew I wanted to niche down because even in teaching, I did that. You know, I, I was a general ed teacher in the special ed, and I, I went into reading because that's where I love you know, pulling data from certain things. I love, you know, just like one thing to focus on. And I knew I wanted to do that in my virtual thing, um, kind of business too, because 
Mm -hmm. it's, I like doing all the things, but you're doing all the things, you know, and I kind yeah. of wanted to yeah. focus on doing one thing. And it was kind of between podcast management and Pinterest management. And so I um, discovered you through uh, Michaela Quinn, who I did my virtual assisting work from. Yeah. And it just seemed to fit better. I could do, you know, I wouldn't have to be editing and doing all those things with sound and everything that would didn't necessarily maybe work during nap time or, you know, yeah. I the things where I would need more equipment. Not, I mean, not a lot of equipment, but just more. And this I could do easily in between. And I fell in love with it. So that, um, you know, that led me to you. And um, yeah, so I started your course. Gosh, I think it was August, I believe. Yeah. And, um, yeah, we've gone from there. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for sharing that. And I can just, you know, my story is very similar to yours with, you know, having been a teacher and I wasn't in the classroom um, as long as you. But one thing that I don't always share a lot, like I had shared that I was really interested in becoming a Pinterest manager. But one thing that you had touched on that I think is really helpful for people to think about when they're trying to decide, like, is this something I'm going to like doing? Because it's one thing, you know, I truly believe that the concepts and like understanding what you actually do and doing the work isn't, you know, something that people it's, I don't think there's a huge learning curve. I feel like it's right. fairly straightforward. And once you can start applying it, it makes it even more concrete, but it's more people trying to decide that if they think they're going to like it or not, but then also you had touched on what your day to day looks like. And yes. it sounds like that also really helped you eliminate other options that you thought might be a good fit from the standpoint that, like you said, with podcast management, you might, it might require more equipment. It might not be as flexible, especially because you're listening to things, you know, it's just, right. it looks different, the actual work that you're doing. So that it sounds like, you know, that your intuition and deciding that this was a good fit was absolutely right. So I would love to hear, and I actually don't know this for myself. I knew that you had done previous work um, as a virtual assistant, but how many clients did you have and what did that look like once you joined the academy with landing clients and stuff? So kind of catch me up over the past few months with actually getting started and then doing specifically just Pinterest management work. Sure. Well, so when I started, oh gosh, I trying to remember it was in the spring like when I started the virtual assisting part okay. of things and it does sorry my little one's walking around on my own <laughs> oh, <you're fine. laughs> um, what's gonna say? so I think this is the hard part right because I feel like some people the client pickup I guess or the ability to get clients is different for everyone and it just depends on niches it depends on everything right and in, 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 in all of the in all of the, you know, if it's an Etsy seller, if it's a Shopify seller, if it's a PPT seller, you know, all of those sorts of things. So I had two or three clients that I was working with. Some were just um, quick, like maybe once a month I was writing a blog post or twice a month I was writing a blog post, um, some email management type things and stuff like that. So that took, gosh, two three months um, <laughs> from like, when I was doing virtual assisting to get to that point. And mm -hmm. for us, it was okay. It wasn't something because I know sometimes people are like, I'm out, I'm quitting my job, I'm doing this and I'm gonna make my income back in a month. And yeah. I, it, that is not how it works for me. And I'm not saying it doesn't work like that for people because some people do that, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. It works hard, but that's not what it works for me. So by the time I got to Pinterest management, I knew that it wasn't going to be an overnight thing. And I think that sometimes mm -hmm. that's the disheartening part of it is because and, and I went through this, you know, too, like, who's going to hire me? Who's going to, not necessarily for Pinterest, but before that, because I kind of went through the like, virtual assistant curve and then, yeah. you know, kind of um, goes with that. Like, who's going to hire me? I don't know how to do this stuff. I was a teacher. I didn't do, like, you know, I didn't create lessons online for people. Like, I, I haven't done that. Who would, who would want to hire me? And then you find out, oh, people do. Like, you know what I mean? That yeah. sort of, kind of that, you know, we, you call it like an imposter syndrome type thing. Like, yeah. Where it just, you know, you aren't sure. So. I started the academy in August um, for you, for Pinterest. And then um, my first client came in September, I think at the end of September. And now I'm up to four and I have a discovery call tomorrow. Um, <gasps> Yay, so, I didn't know yeah, that. That's amazing. Yeah, that's exciting. That's exciting. Um, from there. So I feel like I had some time to kind of work on my confidence, work on, you know, a pitch that would work, uh, get, you know, get those, those kind of um, administrative tasks to your portfolio, all those sorts of things out 
of the way because that does take a lot of time and energy to figure that out and how you want to put it together and sometimes i think we can get stuck at that point mm -hmm. and if that makes sense as opposed to like you know what it's good enough i've got to get out there and start to get clients you know because we can get stuck in that slot does it look right is it am i you know what i mean am i doing the right thing that sort of thing so yes. anyway who's trying to say like it's okay to push on because you know what i mean that's the important part that's where you have to get the meat in and that's what can take the longest and can be the most disheartening. But once you get there, you know what I mean? That's sort of, so what I'm trying to say is like, that part's hard. Yeah, or it yeah. was for me, maybe not for everybody, but like, you know, I mean like, oh, somebody, they went with somebody else again, or like, what, what do I have that, or what didn't I have that they have? You know what I mean? That sort of thing. But yeah. once it starts rolling, then you kind of understand, okay, now this is the part, or you know what, maybe they'll say no, but then the next one will say yes. You know what I mean? That I don't know how to say that, but just trying to encourage, because I think sometimes, that part can be discouraging for lack of yeah. a No, I, I totally agree with you. And I'm so glad that you touched on that part because it's it's not all rainbows and sunshine. And one thing right. that you mentioned is like you started your business really last spring. And I know right. that you were focusing on virtual assisting and like you said, getting some of those foundational pieces together. But I know that I, you know, I'm assuming obviously you had to go back and kind of update that too though, so yeah. that it was more Pinterest specific. Oh yeah, 100%. But it sounds like that you know your mindset and also especially after getting started as a virtual assistant it really helps you understand like it takes time to build but yes. then once that momentum gets started and you kind of in some ways like get out of your own way yes. and realizing that like it's it's probably not going to be perfect but i just need to start putting myself out there because i think that once you start getting some of those wins it kind of becomes addictive but then yeah. it also starts to build your confidence because even just getting on a discovery call like you said there are people that are going to say no and it's not personal it's not like not you know that you necessarily did anything wrong but it just it's going to be part of business and i think that continuing to move forward and not letting those things like not internalizing that and somehow making it about yourself but just saying this is this comes with the territory and this is a no but that means i'm just getting that much closer to my yes and so the exactly. fact that you have four clients now and you're getting discovered calls but i mean that's amazing so one thing that i get asked a lot and i would love to hear from you because you know i can speak to my experience but i can't obviously speak for my students so what would you say, whether it be like an attribute or um, a skill that led to your success? Like, what are you doing that has led to all of this success for you? Honestly, I would just say like perseverance. Because, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, you just, you just got to keep going. You know, yeah. you just got to keep trying with it. And then, like you said, I think once your confidence builds, then you can <laughs> speak to questions differently that clients may have or you know if they're like hey if i don't want to do x but i want to do y how is that going to work out or you know those sorts of things and then during the discovery call they can sense that you're confident or if you're you know or if you're not <laughs> you know what I mean? yeah. that sort of thing too and not to say that if you're not confident they aren't gonna hire you that's not the case but you just feel so much better about even just putting yourself out there for another um, like cold pitch or, you know, just sending an email to someone out of the blue saying, hey, I've been following you for a while. You know, I've noticed X, Y, and Z or, you know, those sorts of things that you want to connect with people and you feel better about doing that as well. But also I think, I mean, teaching prepares you for that in some ways. And I know yeah. not everybody who looks into the Pinterest Academy is a teacher, but, mm -hmm. and, and really any career, you know what I mean? I, I think it does because, you know, not everything's a win but you keep going <laughs> you know what I mean? right, right. And, and to go from there. And plus really, it was like, you know what? I can make this work. And I think that because in the Academy, you offer that kind of white glove one-on-one -on -one approach um, to each of your students, it really does make a difference because you can bounce something off and you can be like, because I've been in programs that, that don't, that maybe offer a coaching piece, but it's not personalized. And, and there, it, that's just the way the program is laid out. You know, it, it is what it is. Or a program that maybe, you know, somebody did back in 2020 and you're buying it and it's still just 2020 information. You know what I mean? Yours is up to date. You're always updating, you're adding value. And that gives confidence as well. And the fact that I can be like, hey, I have Emily in my back pocket. And don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, makes a difference because you don't have to know it all at first. Yeah. You know what I mean? You have the foundational pieces, but you don't have to know every single piece. 
and because I can ask you and get coached through that. You know what I mean? And then yeah. that helps, then that builds that knowledge base. So for the next time, you know, then you have that answer. Yeah, no, that's, that's awesome. And, you know, you said perseverance and that's kind of what I was saying before, you know, I don't feel like conceptually that doing the actual work and going through and learning how to market on Pinterest is something that, you know, I really believe that everybody can learn how, yeah. but not everybody has that perseverance and some people need that immediate gratification. And I do think that there are things though, and it's, it's also about perspective and understanding that if you're going from not knowing how to market on Pinterest and you get through right. module one and you learn how to market on Pinterest, like that is a win in itself and you've already come so far. But I think oh, that, 100%. you know, we all, I do this myself, like we get wrapped up in our success, just being like how many clients we have or right. how much money we've made. And, you know, we actually experience wins all the time, but it's oh, about exactly. also having somebody help you put those things into perspective because when you're doing it on your own, and that's one thing that you touched on was like, you have the perseverance, but then you also have somebody to lean on yes. when you have questions or to help you feel confident when maybe you're not feeling so confident. Yes. And so like those two things coupled together, it sounds like has really been like your recipe for success, which is, yes. you know, awesome. And that's the thing too, is, you know, you have persevered, but like, I can't make anybody show up and share, you know, where they're getting stuck or, you know, I, I don't know what questions you have. And it's, you have been active and it shows too how much you care about your clients and helping them and you know their results and success is really important to you and that's not something that you know that's something that it's like an internal motivation i can't in, on the opposite side instill that in my students so that's why i always say like you know i really do feel like people have to like I have to give a hundred percent, but you know, on the other side, my students have to give a hundred percent and you know, for any business owner that is looking for a Pinterest manager, I'm like, they would be so like fortunate and blessed to work with you, which I will make sure at the end, but I want to make sure that people have a chance to connect with you. Yes. Um, if they would like to chat with you about your services. So I want to, I want to respect your time because I know that you've got little ones at home. So I'll try to wrap this up, but I did want to ask you, so I kind of asked you about like, like what has led to your success there is um one other thing i wanted to ask so for people who are thinking about becoming a pinterest manager yes. and kind of on the fence like if this is the right thing for them do you have any advice or anything that you would share with them that helped you make that decision like that this was the right fit for you sure um i would say so two things honestly like the only time that i ever used pinterest was like for my classroom honestly like <laughs> I don't get <laughs> That was me too. Whatever <laughs> was like in there with 1400. No, like it was like, oop, I need an idea for my classroom. I'm going to print it out. So honestly, <laughs> I should have been learning curve. Like a huge learning curve. <laughs> to figure this out. But I knew that I liked the specialization aspect of it. Mm -hmm. And I feel like for somebody who wants to focus on one part of the whole social media, um, world you know what yeah. i mean that sort of thing that it's a yeah. good way to do it and then it i don't want to say it's rote and retreat routine because it's different for every client but there are similarities between each client and so what you, once you kind of make that connection it um it makes it that much easier so i guess for me it was because I, you know i touched on some little social media management when i was doing you know my my virtual assistant things and i still do pieces and parts for people like it's not that it's all you know, all done and I haven't, you know, I haven't touched a blog post since. That's yeah. <laughs> but, um, but I feel like it's great if somebody just wants to specialize in one area. And I feel like too, that people are always looking for information on Pinterest, always, like without a doubt. I mean, I, mm -hmm. people will be like, hey, talk to me about this, or I don't know about this. Or like, you, you know, some of the students do audits for people in Facebook groups because people are like, hey, I know, or, or, and one of my clients, she was like, you know what? I'm posting five times a day. I'm posting whatever I can just to get content onto the platform because that's what I was told to do. You know what I mean? Somebody advised that, which was good advice. But, yeah. <laughs> excuse me, but you know, it was exhausting, you know, that sort of thing. So even just little hints and tips, um, people are always looking. And I think that it's so much easier to make a connection that way. I don't know how to do mm -hmm. that. That's like a hindsight piece that I wouldn't have known going into it. But I also think that honestly, 
like your training is some of the best that I've been through. And not that I've been through a ton of online trainings, but but I have been through a decent amount and it, it really is amazing. So anybody even on the yeah, fence, like you said, you. to do your like, this, I think you do kind of the like the, what do I want to call it? Like the live, I don't know, videos, like yeah. <laughs> my word finding is gone. But you know, you can join, you can join, you're giving information about it. You're talking about the beginning of the Pinterest Academy. And so if somebody hasn't done that yet, I think that's an excellent way because you do lay things out. And then once you go ahead and, um, talk to you kind of that one-on-one -on -one application piece, you get so much more information. And so I guess in long, long story short, if it's something that you're interested in, I say go for it because you're not going to find something out there that has as much support as you give, Emily. I really feel that. And oh, you know, you, you know because, because you, again, like, like you were saying, you care about your client, you know, your clients, your students and what their success as well. And you know, it's, it, it, I've never felt, you know, like lost or, you know, because I can put that in, to Slack or ask on a coaching call and it's answered. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and so anyway, I feel like if you're looking for an online program to take and to, to expand, to kind of work in the virtual space, this is it. Because once you get into Pinterest, you find, like I said, you find that it can be replicated. It's easier to replicate than, like I said, I felt like kind of I was on, like my hair was on fire. You know what I mean? Like I'm just, look, look, here, I'm doing this over here, I'm doing this. Yeah. You know, like, just trying to get all the pieces so you can get that experience. So you can get those, you know, those testimonials and things like that. But this has been so nice just to kind of settle into something. I don't know how to say that otherwise. So I don't know if that really answers the question. No, but. I think it does because I think that also gives people peace of mind too. That like you said, we all, you know, we want change it, it some part of us wants change when obviously yeah. when we're looking because we know that the current path we're on ultimately in a year five years ten years is not the path we want to continue yeah. on but to step outside of your comfort zone and get uncomfortable and being okay with there being uncertainty discomfort yeah. you know that's really scary but i think that you know what you're saying is that like in hindsight you know once you're doing the work and yes there's nuances and there's different client personalities their businesses yeah. are each different but you know you kind of get into a routine and there becomes this comfort with feeling like you really know what you're doing and like you yeah. said with your hair on fire you know yes. you're not constantly being thrown new tasks and different things and it's like you can truly become an expert and then i think when we you know can really step into like that expert position and we can yeah. help our clients and you know we become the sounding board for them and you know help them look at things in their business that they might have not even considered That's then true. you know i just think you feel so so different so it made perfect yeah. sense to me though so i think that i think that's really helpful and i i love how you know everybody's obviously brain works differently and i'm like that's such a good point about like you know just getting comfortable in your skills and then you know it just helps you feel settled in this new career so yeah. i love that um no, that is so true. i would love for you to share how people and I will share this on I'm going to make a post today on my Instagram okay, and I will share how people can contact you I'll put it in my stories and stuff Thank but you. I want people to know how they can contact you if they are looking to hire a Pinterest manager yes perfect share. no that's perfect so I um so my Instagram page is a sad little place right now but it's getting there because <laughs> <laughs> they say, like, right, if you're managing other people's stuff, you don't have time to, like, do your own. And that is the truth, right? That was like, me for a few like, years. <laughs> but my Instagram is my name. And Emily, I know you'll put that in there, but it's at yeah. Robin Noriega. And um, I have the link tree in there for, like, the, the booking that you can book. Oh, perfect. Um, okay. So we can do that. And then there's the... Um, there's my email as well. And you could just shoot me an email and, and that works just as well. So either one. And Emily, like you said, don't put that up there. And I do appreciate it. Um, and, and I'll yeah. share if I'll grab that from your Instagram handle too. And yeah. I'm like cracking up because I totally am, was the same as you. And you know, you're getting, you have clients, you're getting on discovery calls. That's actually another thing that's beautiful about being a Pinterest manager is you don't have to have this huge social media presence. Yes, it's important to have. And that's something that, you know, when you're continuing to scale over time that you can focus on more down the road, but yeah. totally get that. So what I'll do too, obviously, you know, everybody can follow and connect with Robin on um, her Instagram, but then I will grab your link tree and then I can share that specifically in my stories oh, so yeah. that people can grab that from my stories. 
and yeah, then they can connect with you and chat with you about your services. I know that you do audits and cleanups and management, yeah. so um, whatever people need. So yay, yeah. I can't thank you enough, Robin, no, especially you. with you <laughs> having your little ones at home. You are <laughs> I amazing. hope you all appreciated the background noise. And the <laughs> I did. That you got. No, I appreciate it. Actually, I was laughing because my kids are upstairs with my husband. And I heard like a loud crash and then like, Whoa! and I'm like, oh gosh. <laughs> so believe me, that's what it's all about. <laughs> I know it. I know it. No, I, I understand completely. But, no, and I did want to say, I know. Oh, thank you, Tina. I saw Tina um, pop on there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, she, she is the best. So, she is the best. Let me tell you guys, if you need a handmade wreath, I'm going to plug for her because if you need a handmade wreath, it's beautiful. Like head on over there immediately. It, it's just amazing. Does so. she have an Etsy shop? <laughs> Yes, she now does. I'm like, oh, she does. Now I'm yeah. like thinking about like no. Christmas gifts. Girl, I'm sending it to you right now because it is like beautiful. These things are oh. top notch. So Tina is, yeah, it's great. Um, but and I will send you that in like, but I was yes, going to say, yes. you know, and the only thing that I honestly wish, and this is kind of cliche, but I wish I would have known about this so much sooner. Honestly, I oh. mean, I, you know, truly because coming out of the classroom, it was like, kind of disorienting you know what I mean what do I do now like I you know I want to be at home I want to do these sorts of things you know I mean just all of this stuff and I just wish I really would have known about it sooner so to tell the you know the people who are on the fence like you won't regret it honestly it's not anything that you will regret truly because and, and I remember Emily when we first met you talked about like hey you know what how much did you pay for your college degree you know truly like I know. And it's like tens it's, of we laugh dollars. about it but it's like oh my gosh like you so know, much. and and it's worked, you know, and truly, and then to the cost of the program is nothing compared to what I paid for my college degree, which I was so thankful for that I had, and I'm so thankful for what I was able to do in the classroom. But honestly, I'm not using it at all now. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm not. And, and sure with my kids and things like that, but you know what I mean? So I feel like it's such a good investment as well because it's investing in yourself. You know what I mean? And so many times we're hesitant to do that for whatever reason. You know, there's a multitude of reasons, but you know, make this your like Christmas gift to yourself. Do this, you know what I mean? Do that, you know, do these sorts of things so that you can, you know, in a year you look back and you're like, well, look at where I've come. You know, this is amazing. You're yeah. like, this is, you know, just going from there. And right, yeah, like Laura said, I'm still paying it. I'm not using it. You know what I mean? It's, it's not as much I as know. I would like, you know, from there. So no, thank you all. And honestly, like I said, I really just wish I would have found out about all this all sooner. But I'm happy well, that I'm here now. I know. You know say, I'm so glad you found me when you did one thing that yes. you're, this is the last thing I'll mention, but that was, I just, I, when you were saying that, I actually told somebody that the other day, I'm like, yes, yes you're placing a bet on yourself. And it's like, yes. what other thing, like, what else would you rather bet on than yourself? Because, exactly. you know, it, and I just, I don't know, I, like you said, I don't, there's nothing better that you can invest in and uh, just totally agree with you. So. Yeah, and it motivates you too. I really do feel like it gives you some motivation because like you said, it's time, you like, gotta make this back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. That's how I. That's but, I know. That's why how I am with you know, anything I've invested in. You. No, Emily, yeah. thanks so much. I really, really appreciate it. I like chatting, yes. and I hope everybody, you know, gains something from it too. I hope yeah. you know. Has you know, two cents, <laughs> my two cents. Yes. No, thank you so much for sharing Robin and where you are. And, um, I can't thank you enough for being so amazing. And I mean, you've just put in the work and, but that I can't make people do that. No. So and that, no, that is the case. This is, it's not handed to you on a plate. Like, and I, and I don't mean to sound like harsh, you know what I mean? Because <laughs> yeah. you do, you give 110%, but if I'm not coming with 110% or even hundred percent, you know what I mean? If I'm not coming yeah. with that, then it doesn't <laughs> it doesn't work excuse me we meant to stick around yes. here but um you know that sort of thing and i know um i think it was maybe laura that said something about that she's got littles at home and you know i i didn't know i was like is this actually going to work with littles at home and it does you know what i mean like yeah you, I, you find the time you know what i mean you, you find the time and it works for sure so yeah um you know just another i don't know i could go on all day but anyway <laughs> No, I love it. I love it. And I, I appreciate your time so much. And um, yeah, I, it's been so nice thank chatting you. with you. So yes. I can't thank you enough. And I will share your thank information you. and my stories. Um, yes. I have a email I need to send my list to. So Perfect. I'll be sharing the recap, the link for the live, but then also yes. through email, I'll share your information too. So thank you. Um, yes. Hopefully thank you, you get some good contacts for that. Yes. yes. So no, I appreciate it. Good stuff. Yes. Okay.
Yeah. All right. Have a good day. We'll talk to you all yeah, later. Yeah. Sounds good. Bye, Robin. Thank Bye. you.